Hello uh, and welcome everyone to an online chess class. Today we have a very excited topic. We're going to be learning a very modern and very dynamic opening for the black pieces, which is called the Benoni defense. Now, I would also like to get a confirmation so that you, dear audience, can hear me well and also see me. So we'll wait just a couple of moments for some people to gather and please don't be shy. Say hello in the chat. I will also be the first one to type something for you. Hello, friends. Can anyone hear me? And uh, how are you, eccentric horse? This time uh, you said hello before you gave me a question, right? <laughs> That's very nice. <clears throat> All right, I can see that I can hear myself. Hello, Sedant. Everyone is gathering. Now Magnus Carlson is playing, so I don't expect big audience unless he stops streaming. Then I guess everyone will uh, just come to to our stream and learn the Benoni. Hello, Sedant. I hope you're doing well today. Today's opening that we're going to learn is very exciting. I, um, I will give you more than one interesting notion about this opening in general and why should you be playing this against d4. Ooh, very nice, Sedan. You play Benoni. So hopefully I can upgrade a couple of lines for you today. We're going to be looking at modern Benoni. I want to look at the most ambitious and... Hi, Kunal. Hello. So just a few more moments for everyone to come. I view this sort of a lesson more than even... Okay, stream lesson, maybe they um, they don't fight with each other, these two words. But for everyone who is um, who has came and you see me for the first time, um, I like the, these lessons to be highly interactive. I'm welcoming you to ask me any kind of chess-related questions. Uh, I can uh, share my own experience that I have uh, last eight years. I'm working full time as a chess coach, so I have to know a thing or, or two about chess improvement, right? Yesterday, Michael Tal was playing uh, uh, Benoni. Actually, even Gary Kasparov was using it in serious games and match against Korchnoi. <clears throat> I think Bobby Fischer has also used uh, Benoni. And uh, out of the 21st century, Topalov was the one who also played Benoni in very serious tournaments. So slowly people are gathering. I think I shouldn't expect too many people as uh, Magnus Carlsen is streaming, but um, let's just start the lesson then. And uh, today I will show you many different variations for the white pieces to play against the Benoni. Um, we're going to look at four pawns attack. We're going to look at what to do if white fianchetto is the bishop and some modern and classical variations as well. I prepared four in total. At the start of the lesson, I will give you the pawn structure and main plans for both sides in this structure. It's modern Benoni structure. And uh, we are also going to be looking at one just fragment of the game where white is going to play his dream move that US black has to have to always be aware of. <clears throat> Eccentric Horse says that the problem with the Benoni is that most players at, at his level don't let him reach uh, this position. The thing is with the Benoni that there is not much you can do as white to avoid it. Black just plays c5 and you push and then you're entering Benoni. So not much really that uh, you can do as white to, to, to avoid it. Otherwise, you're just if you don't play d5 and push the pawn to forward to win space, with uh, with the white pieces then you're not claiming any kind of advantage in these structures as white most of the time so usually of course the pawn is going to be on g6 because black wants to play g7 but this is the benoni structure and one of the most important ones as this is the most common position to get so what is going on here uh, white and, and black, both players are trying to push the majorities in general. That's not the only plan, but white has the majority on the king side, and so f4, e5 becomes the first plan that comes to mind, whereas black has the majority of the pawns on the queen side, and so in general, that's where they would like to push, although that's not the only plan. So the main plan for white in these positions is to get e5. With e5, they make the deep pawn passed if black takes and most importantly they can also use the e4 square then for a piece like say the knight 
Sometimes white also goes f4, f5 and uh, follow with the kingside attack. f6 could come and uh, sometimes we could also combine the ideas of playing e5 and f5. Now, rarely, but it's also used, white goes for minority attack, so that would be rook to b1 and then moves like b4, that's also pretty common. Now, black on the other hand, as I mentioned, wants to push the majority on the queen side, that's one of the plans, and get those three pawns going. Uh, black also a lot of times puts pressure on the pawn, so e4 pawn is usually exposed and uh, they're bringing the pressure against e4, they're trying to claim the e5 square for the knight many times, and also break like f5 to help under undermine the white center is also very thematic. Uh, hello Alan, welcome. Yeah, today everyone who doesn't play Benoni, if you play d4 you must know Benoni, like there is no way to avoid it basically. And uh, as, as as player with the black pieces, I'm teaching you one of the most dynamic and uh, points gathering uh, opening against d4 out of all. Objectively, Benoni is uh, not uh, the best opening to play, but practically I would say it's absolute top opening to play if you're playing to score points with the black pieces and want to create imbalances. Especially if you like dynamics and you like sharp positions. Now, before we look at the games and concrete theory, I want to give you one very thematic position. It's a fragment of the game. And in this position, I want you to tell me what would you play with the white pieces. This is the first exercise. And I want you to think, what would you play with the white pieces? We're going to be learning an opening from both sides, black and white. That's how I like to learn openings. We cannot just be looking at games where black has won. We cannot be looking at the games where white has won. We have to understand what each side wants and then it's easier for us to play. So I'm gonna give you here a, a, a moment for a deep thought. Okay, half a minute or so. In the meantime, I will just try to answer any kind of questions you have. Please focus on the position, critical moment for white. What should white play here? Yash, um, you have a question. Uh, how can a 1300 rated player improve? Well, how can improve a 900 rated player? How can improve 1100 rated player? Don't you think that <clears throat> it's the same answer? By doing a little bit of everything. There is no formula. It's not like with 900 you have to only do tactics. And when you get to 1300 you only work on openings. I think that the number here has nothing to do with... Uh, with the fact of how to improve. I think it depends on individual, it's highly not general, but if I would try to generalize, I think that the answer is similarly how did you improve from 700 to 1000, for example, right? Does that make sense? Krunk's 1990 uh, is suggesting very interesting move. I like that idea. Yes, Sedan, I, I know Bobby Fischer used to say that black has to play for a win all the time. So <clears throat> here comes one of the critical moments and you all have to be aware of this idea for, uh, for the white pieces and it's e5. And the idea of it is very straightforward. We wanna make our d pawn a passed one. Also a lot of times, but perhaps not in this position, we wanna place the knight on the e4 square. So if black in this position, say, plays knight to h5, then we can play e6. And we're starting to develop the initiative. Now, if d takes e5, we could first take on e5. So takes, takes, and then we play pawn to d6. So that's the main objective of this break for white. We're creating a pass pawn. And uh, I think that white's activity of the pieces combined with the pawn gives white close to winning position. Now, we can also analyze it even further. So, what happens if, um, if say for example, black plays knight, takes, uh, knight to f3, which happened in the game. White takes the bishop, takes the knight, we have an exchange of pieces, 
and queen to d8. So in this position, so far, um, if we count the pawns, the material seems to be equal, but white's pawn combined with very active pieces of white give him a winning advantage due to support that this pawn gets. So white plays a very strong move that is very active when you have an advantage in, with active pieces, you wanna continue playing actively and white just opens up attack with all of his pieces, right? So if you take a look at all of the white's pieces, I think you're more or less happy with all of them. So in the game we had knight to d5, bishop takes d5, bishop to b7, takes on b7, rook b7, queen c5, and white had a winning game. This was a grandmaster game, right? And black cannot do much to stop this pawn, right? Plus white is a pawn up. So this idea that white played e5 is a very typical, and black has to always be aware that it doesn't work to uh, the white's favor. Now, does that, does that mean that when white gets e5, he's always winning? By any means, that's not. But this is the absolute main and only of almost idea for the white in these structures. Of course, they could sometimes also, as we're going to see, try to put pressure on the d6 pawn. That's another plan that white has. But most of the time they're trying to get e5 and that's what black needs to prevent. So now let's look at the theory and uh, the first and the most important um, opening that we need to learn or the variation of the Benoni, let me just remove those green arrows, is going to be the four pawns attack. So this is the starting position of the Benoni and uh, pretty much white has no choice but to push, otherwise I don't think he could be claiming an advantage. If they play e3, of course white still maintains a slight advantage and it is playable, but uh, black is already pretty comfortable in these positions. So say one of the moves would be d5 and then <clears throat> these positions are still slightly better for white. Most of the time, white plays d5 to get objectively maximum advantage. And then, okay, black plays e6, tries to undermine white center uh, advantage and space. Very natural. Knight c3, takes and takes. And we get this majority. White has the majority on the king side, and black has the majority on the queen side. Now, with modern Benoni, Black is putting the bishop on g6 on g7. That's the long diagonal and perhaps the most active place for the bishop. With the structures with bishop e7 is something I do not recommend to play with black. So g6 and one of the most aggressive moves that white could be playing here. We're gonna be looking at various knight f3 ideas. We're gonna look at h3 ideas. We're gonna be looking at fianchetto bishop and the most dangerous perhaps for those who don't know any kind of theory, the f4 variation. So Maximilian is saying that he's usually playing Slav, um, but he's looking forward to learn Benoni. Uh, since some people have gathered, I'm going to repeat this um, a bit later. Um, I hope sun is not shining over me. Maybe I'm going to just, just give me a moment so that you could guys see me a little bit better. I'm going to make it dark here. That should be a little bit better. And I can tell you one thing that when you're going to tournaments uh, and you want to score points against d4, there are two openings that score points very well in practice against weaker opponents. And it's usually Benoni and Benko. Like if you are playing someone who is strong uh, from Slav defense, from Queen's Gambit, not that easy to outplay them, to be honest. Like if you see 2600s are going to European Championships and they're playing 2400s, they're playing these Benkos, Benonis, just to create an imbalance and sort of a mess on the board. That's where there is highest chance of inaccuracy for the opponent. So, yeah, objectively, it's a good, uh, good opening. Now, someone is asking, instead of g6, can we play uh, queen to a5? I don't think that's an idea. I have never seen it, right? So there is no way this is an idea, I believe. No. Anything would work, right? No, I'm not even sure. Like, say I'm just playing knight to f3, right? Just for instance, because I could play bishop d2 and get out, right? And even if you take on e4, I think you might run into problems with queen e2, no? Because, okay, f5 is the only move perhaps that saves the knight, and then bishop d2, it looks very shaky, right? 
because now I'm kind of threatening knight takes e4. This is only gonna get you in trouble. Eccentric horse better play the way uh, the books say, yeah? Yeah, there are sidelines. We're gonna look at main lines today, but even five. And I'm pretty sure that nine times out of ten you're gonna play Benoni. You're gonna be seeing one of the things by from White's point of view what we're gonna look at today. Did Carlson stop streaming? Because I can see a surge of people coming. Today we're gonna be looking at Benoni, guys. <laughs> yeah, when Carlson is streaming, yeah, no one is gonna watch Castoni. So sad, yeah. <laughs> okay. Ah, uh, James. Hello, nice to see you here. I thought so, right? Because I saw an increase in number of people. Okay. So, this is one of, one of the most dangerous... Uh, variations for the black side really aggressive approach and as we talked e5 is the main idea for white and the benoni besides putting pressure also on d6 and you have to know how to react to each of those and here black is not scared now in this variation it's possible for black to play e5 right away and here there are a couple of moves one could be taking but black gets even better perhaps position after knight f to d7 looks weird and white has gotten this very huge space advantage it seems but when your opponent has the majority of the pawns in the center uh, you need to block it and attack it and that's pretty much what is happening here uh, for the for the white pieces and I'm, I'm quickly gonna take a look and uh, so he's saying they couldn't understand Carlson, right? And uh, they switched to, to, to my lesson, yeah? <laughs> That's nice. So here, uh, I'm just going to give you a line. It's a sideline, which perhaps you have to see once. Pretty rare. Um, there are a couple of moves for white to play. If knight e4, uh, we're kind of going to give this pawn. So we're taking on e5. Not that pawn, but give that square. Knight, say, d6. And it's just going to be a change in the move order. Uh, Usually they go knight b5, although same uh, same consequences are going to follow after this move. So black is going to take on e5. We get this check. King goes to e7 here. Also uh, f8 is possible, but e7 objectively is better. Because once the knight moves away, you have rook e8 and king f8 ideas. If you play king f8, then this rook is very hard to get into the game. So after king e7, they take this on c8 because they don't have anything to do with this knight already. Queen c8, and here we're kind of pawn up, but uh, white has a compensation. Objectively, black is just better in this position. So say if they take the pawn, I guess we could just take, and the idea is that we want to play something like, if we get rook e8 and king f8 comfortably, we're winning probably as black. So they usually play knight f3 and we don't want to take and expose our king even further. So rook e8 is the move and uh, there is some more theory here, but the idea of blacks, if everything is calm and safely, we want to get king to f8 and then we're just pawn up, I guess, right? So object it's like dynamic equality, that's how I would describe it. So that happens after four pawn attack, as I'm going to just once more just introduce the opening to the newcomers, so th to those who just joined the stream. So c5 by black, d5 the only move for big advantage for white because of the space advantage. e6, we're always getting to the same structures here. d6, e4, g6, that's always where the bishop belongs in the Benoni. f4, bishop g7, and we looked at the line e5. So you have to remember knight f to d7, and then that you shouldn't shy away from allowing this check. And no more uh, theories required at, at your level. Yeah, it's enough. Now, I have a question, a bishop to b5, and um, what would you guys play here? It's impossible that if you don't know, you're going to guess it the right way. But I still give you a chance, right? So maybe it's more like lottery. How to play here with the black pieces? Uh, those who just joined to the lesson or those who see me for the first time, um, I would encourage you to participate actively and inter interact with me in the chat. I am uh, a chess coach full-time for the last eight years. Um, probably know a thing or two about chess. So if you have any kind of chess-related questions, I will gladly share what I know and uh, also encourage you to tell me answers to my questions in, in the chat. If you're enjoying the stream, I really, really would appreciate if you put a like on this video. That really means that you're enjoying the lesson and that's your way of saying thanks for me giving this to you. Thank you very much.
Yeah, TC Joe, maybe Rook D8 objectively could also be uh, a move in that position. So we have many interesting suggestions. <laughs> Eccentric Horse is saying that the last variation we looked at is like delayed bone cloud because black just moved forward, right? Yeah, TC Joe, if you're um, like very ambitious about opening theory, you could look up, maybe Stockfish suggests Rook D8 in that position. But the way the database says is Rook E8 is more natural. So there is a reason why Rook E8 is more natural. Maybe Rook D8 has no clear cut plan of how to develop for black. I don't think that you should be following the first line by Stockfish. We don't care what Stockfish says. We care the, about the lines that score points. You should build up repertoire based on scoring points. You need practical repertoire, not what uh, objectively is best in correspondent chess, right? You don't want to play the best moves, you want to play the moves that win. All right, we have many, many suggestions here. And uh, the theoretical move is uh, knight f to d7, right? Now, why knight f to d7? Why not uh, another move, like knight bd7? So basically, both moves, knight bd7 and bishop d7, run into e5 when the knight gets hit. And that's considered not good for, for uh, black. However, in the back in the old days, when the computers were not analyzing these positions, then it was... Uh, unclear if this position leads to something for white it was a big and crazy line and i'm going to give you very force in line uh, for the white pieces if that's what you are learning from uh today because not all of you want to play benoni with black but uh, some of you play d4 and gotta know the lines with the white pieces so there is this forcing line knight h5 uh, prepares queen h4 check e6 huge counter attack queen h4 check g3 Knight takes g3, pawn takes, sacking the rook in the corner. Now this knight is gonna be lost because it's pinned. White takes time and defends the, the knight that was hanging. This, this is how most of the games went in the back in the old days. So bishop takes c3, takes c3, for example a6. We had many many games here. Like I, I saw in the database 100 games here. Queen g4, f5, <laughs> queen f3. Cheeky little move to exchange the queens, and white was supposed to be winning in this position, this end game. So basically, don't play knight bd7 because after e5 it's gonna be crazy. And if you're gonna playing a, a strong player, I feel like these moves can be found out over the board for uh, 800 and up. Not all of them, but most of them, and you're gonna be in trouble. Okay. TC Joe, just play Rook D8 then, if you disagree. Hey, it's your repertoire, right? Knight F to D7. So this is the main move, and now E5 loses power because F6 is not hanging. So the main move here for white is A4. No point in E5 anymore. And here, um, some of the players, I'm just going to give you an idea if that's what you would want to play. Queen h4 seems to be weird here. Why would we, be, in general, be giving this check? The main point of this idea of queen h4 and going back is that now the dark square bishop cannot achieve this maneuver. You see, a lot of times in these structures, at some point, this bishop will find light via h4 square. So bishop would go to e3 to f2 and h4, right? Plus, when we allow white's pawn to go to g3, the squares g4 and f uh, h3 f5 are somewhat weakened sorry h3 and g4 in particular right and they could backfire for black most of the players don't give this check but that's always on our mind so castles knight f3 and white is always preparing this e5 and here there are a couple of ways to play uh, the most sensible probably is knight a6 since white has the pawn on a4 we're trying to establish a knight on this outpost or the weakened square in the opponent's position So, um, from here, knight will go to the b4 square, um, white castles, and you have to choose between two ideas. 
So one idea would be to put a knight on b4, and the other one would be to put a knight on c7. So for example, if knight c7, then you're kind of more inclined for maybe the plan a6 and b5, that's always on your mind. Bishop d3, a6 for example, rook e1, white is preparing this e5 in these structures. Rook e8, bishop e3, rook b8, and then you're playing for this b5 break. So this is one of the plans that you could be uh, doing, as I said at the start of the lesson, pushing the majority on the queen side besides attacking the center is one of the main plans for us. And knight b4 is an alternative, right? So for example, uh, rook to e1 by white, a6, say bishop to f1, that's how some of the games was played. Um, rook e8, h3, White wants to bring the bishop to h4, black kind of plays with f5 and strikes in the center, and the positions are double-edged. So as I always say, pretty much with Benoni, either attack the center, sometimes you can, against especially Fianchetto variation, you can attack on the king side, and b5 you choose between these three plans on um, which one looks the most feasible in that particular situation. So that's the intro to the four pawns attack if white goes for this majority of the pawns in the center. Now the next variation that white could be playing against us is going to be the classical variation and that's what people played in the old days. Yeah, she could be playing a6. You saw I did a6, right? Yeah, blacks, one of the main blacks plans are is to push b5, right? There are these practical openings, as they say, um, Benko and Benoni scores points very well in, 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 in practice, right? And if you're playing especially weaker opponents, like I want to mention this one more time, if you see 2600s are going to like European Championships and Rapid and Blitz, like Benoni, Benko against 2400s and below that are go-to moves against D4. Not they, all, of they, all of them play that, but they want to create an imbalance and fight and uh, draw is not acceptable result for them right so these are the main go-to weapons of course theoretically you don't want to play benoni if you're playing stockfish yeah but no one is going to play stockfish here right so now we're going to learn from the classics it's going to be benoni opening the modern benoni and the classical variation so White is going to play g6, uh, black is going to play g6, e4, bishop g7, and now we're going to play this with bishop to e2. One of the main plans that white has in general would be bishop f4, bringing the knight to c4, and applying pressure on the pawn on uh, against d6. So castles, castles, and here again we can choose from a couple of ideas. Now, one of the moves that we could be playing would be a6, and we would want to play b5. White usually stops us. Again, we get the square, but this time we cannot use it because our pawn is on a6. Now, bishop g4, um, black seizes the opportunity to exchange one of the minor pieces. And one of the things about this structure in general is that white has space advantage and minor piece exchanges benefit black. So if you can like randomly exchange pieces of similar value, it will always benefit black over white. Now, sometimes there is also an idea if, say, a moment earlier and black plays bishop to g4, there is sometimes an idea for white to be playing knight to d2. Just to exchange this light core bishop instead of the knight, uh, because that's the bad bishop that white has, right? So sometimes in some variations, that could be an idea for the opponent. Okay, a6, a4, bishop g4, and now. After bishop f4, like I say, white a lot of times threatens this knight d2. Uh, knight d2 is not in particular very good here because the bishop is still on c1. You kind of want to be the bishop be developed before you close it, right? Um, it works less good here. So bishop f4, and now for example, black plays rook e8, white is very comfortable with knight d2. So then the bishop is out, attacking this pawn on d6. Say we swap, swap. And this knight gets to c4 it's like a, an ideal setup for white what he's getting by no means this is like loss for black but white is getting a lot so black needs already to take on f3 because knight d2 was a threat bishop takes on f3 queen e7 and these are more or less classical plans that we're getting ourselves into right black white a lot of the times try this e5 move all the time on every move they're trying to somehow make it work right uh, with takes on e5 and this d6 ideas but here i think the pawn gets blocked and uh, 
say this line uh, leads to an advantage for probably black right so we're gonna move the rook somewhere and uh, maybe okay black is not maybe clearly better but i think that white doesn't have the activities to support this pawn moving forward and this past pawn i don't know if it's even a strength or, or a weakness right so okay white most of the time prepares it this break of e5 or rook e1 black plays knight bd7 extra piece to get control over e5 a5 is also a very common theme so that when we play b5 they can take and passant and uh, damage our pawn structure although black nevertheless still goes for it and one of the ideas for white to stop all this is with knight to a4 also very typical then black just goes to e5 and say one of the positions and classical ways of playing would be something like this like knight to d7 again getting extra protection for b6 and minority attack for white yeah and the, this, uh, this position has been seen in quite a few games. By any means, this is no, no longer theory. Uh, but in this position, I choose uh, black because I like black's minor pieces better, right? So I think that one of the main plan is basically getting like the bishop to d8 and get b5, yeah. Or just attack a5. a5. A5 is not easy to protect. But if I look at the, just the pieces, right, bishops and knights, then I'm, I'm, I'm choosing black, right? So this is if a6 is played. Um, I'm going to read the chat. Uh, is Benoni positional or tactic? Eccentric horse. Uh, uh, the Benoni in general is very dynamic and very tactical. But white can choose a couple of lines where it gets positional as well. So as I say, uh, this is classical variation and... Uh, Sometimes white in the modern variation even plays h3, uh, not to allow bishop g4 at all. So rook e8 is played by black, where an absolute main line and probably the most popular line, um, knight to d2, knight bd7, very common lines, a4, knight a to e5, queen to c2, and this is the position that I also find myself pretty often in similarly, not with exact move order and move placement, but more or less. And sometimes black can launch even a, a kingside attack, especially with a fianchetto variation. Uh, what white wants is really to play f4. So it's funny to see that uh, black can even afford this move g5. You can do this with two reasons. Uh, one is that the center is closed and two is that maybe black has the dominance over the center which i don't think it's true but the center is blocked and so i don't think white has anything against this uh, g5 the move is very simple we're just preventing f4 um, say rook a3 was followed in uh, in a couple of lines rook is always usable on the third you don't know where it could be switched to h6 knight to c4 Every minor piece in general exchanges uh, favor black, but knight on e5 is a monster. Knight on d2 wasn't in particular very good. So takes, takes, and this was seen in a couple of games. Queen e7, f3, knight h5 with ideas like g4, and it was seen in a couple of games. For example, Vidit from, from India lost a classical game in exactly, I think, this position after h6, right? Recently, because it's on my memory. So this is the classical variation. Um, let's take a look at more variations that white could be playing in the Benoni. So Maximilian is asking, in my opinion, what is the best way to, to combat the Benoni? I think it depends on one style, right? So if you're a positional player, maybe you should be choosing um, more positional lines for the white pieces. Because when you say, what is the best line for white? I think that it depends on who plays white, right? What's good for some or is not good for the others. So as a chess coach, I always try to uh, give the lines to my students that um, fit their personal style. If the player is lazy, I won't be giving him to play Benoni with black at all. If he likes to learn some forcing lines and he's a good dynamical player, then I would, uh, I would uh, teach him Benoni with the black pieces, right? And for white, uh, again, depending exactly on his style. Yeah, I don't think lazy players should be learning Benoni, huh? Sometimes you can get into trouble, because if white knows his lines, it's not good.
objectively you should be checking correspondences but uh, i don't care about the objective variation like say some people are saying a4 is not good i play a4 i beat you 10 times out of 10 for example and who cares right if it scores points i'm gonna continue playing that yeah <laughs> no one cares as long as they don't play stronger players than themselves yeah so you 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 play the structures that you understand that fit your style and uh, you want to be practical and uh, you shouldn't be bothered about objective evaluation as long as it's not bad so if if it is playable objectively then you play it and okay in the benoni white gets 0 0.8 0 0.7 right it's fine if if you know what you're doing with the white pieces i can even risk and like be zero 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 according to the stockfish but black needs to make some precise moves yeah all right so now we're going to look at the fianchetto variation for white which is also very popular it's when white puts the bishop on g2 so it's very different bishop is not going to e2 or, or d3 and in this variation most of the time white quickly transfers the knights to d2 there are also other lines that could be played for example ideas like bishop f4 as well um, knight d2 is very typical the idea of white is to transfer the knight to c4 to build the pressure against the d6 pawn yeah i care that ev objective evaluation wouldn't be bad right and that's all so I'm, i wouldn't be playing something that is lo losing right but other than that i'm completely fine it matters to an extent that you don't want to be objectively lost right and it depends of course on what level you're playing but if you're not 2600 and up uh, then you could afford playing sidelines and uh, we chess coaches were very bothered by players that are playing first line when they are below grandmaster level right yeah it's uh, it's 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 not good uh, because uh, usually all the players prepare the main lines and it's very hard to get opponents out of book if i'm playing the absolute first line i'm playing candidate master it's highly possible that he's gonna just blitz out 30 moves of theory against me so it's better for me to drift away a little bit on move 15 and uh, and then i'm gonna play him instead of his opening preparation yeah jack pack king's indian defense and benoni um it it has a lot of similarities in one way but it's also at the same time very different um you you're gonna get very familiar with this if white plays the benoni with f3 so sometimes they're putting the pawns like that and it reminds of zemish variation of the king's indian so in this line white okay one of the ideas is to go knight d2 black still goes for this main idea a6 a4 and here white plays uh, a lot of times h3 so targeting against any bishop g4 ideas as well as knight g4 knight e5 sometimes and one of the main lines here because um if black plays knight e5 we can just get a4 and knight is coming not coming to g4 that's also very important to know and h3 is a lot of times very multi-purpose and black most of the time just goes rook b8 and they're trying to get this play via b5 i personally don't like this variation as white because i have been many times in trouble so if white plays a5 we're just gonna play b5 and black's pieces here are very getting very active um in general right of course here if i look at this concrete line um am i not scared of knight c4 i am right but okay objectively probably have to take with uh with the knight here i guess and then black's pieces are getting very active don't know why i had rook takes b6 in my in my in my notes yeah it looks like a blender don't play that so white usually plays knight c4 and then black offers a minor piece exchange and minor piece exchanges on average are bad for white so they're going to the corner and it's a crazy line you have seen uh, maybe the game kasparov versus uh, korchnoi where kasparov won with the black pieces it's insanity here and while white is trying to do things on the on the queen side over here and uses that time to maneuver the pieces black prepares some some very dangerous attack on the king side and that's why i don't like to be playing white here because it feels like black can afford making an, an inaccuracy and i as white have to make it absolute top moves absolute first line in order for it all to keep going so e4 by white uh black plays bishop d7 and prepares b5 i'm also always gonna try to keep look at the at the chat 
this was uh, highly popular because uh, Boris Avro uh, recommended the G3 line with uh, in his Grandmaster repertoire, one of the most famous opening books, right? I do teach chess. I think there should be a link to to my um, to my coaching profile in the in the description of the video. I'm teaching around 40 hours a week for the last eight years. Who would believe, right? I'm very grateful and blessed to be able to do this for a living. So white plays a5, drops a pawn, queen takes a5, now takes away the queen to the queen side where she is at least not attacking the king. And white then tries to go g4 and that f4 and f5. In the meantime, what, what you will see black is doing is crazy counterplay. So if he goes back, basically there is nowhere to go back. And that's the point of this whole structure of white. It's pretty much crushing. Like he wants e5, knight is trapped. But black is giving this pawn sack. And it's very, very uh, unclear variation. Uh, black has three pawns already, I believe, for a piece. f5 and knight e5. And here, uh, black wants to go back probably with the queen to d8 and shift it to the king side. And I, in particular, don't like these positions with white pieces. Sorry, right? But objectively, okay, it's playable for both, right? So once more, let's look at the main line. Um, Fianchetto variation. a4, knight d7. h3. Rook to b8, preparing b5, knight to c4, knight to e5, offering a minor piece exchange. They have to go back. I have tried this. Believe me, you don't want to play this either with white. I'm kind of just stuck. There is not much I can do. Black prepares b5, and uh, I tried playing this with white. Even Anatoly Karpov tried. Like, you have to make these waiting moves, right? It's There's no way with white I'm getting anywhere. But, of course, if white is a stronger player, white is going to win, yeah, as well. But it's not my cup of tea. So white goes knight a3, and then black prepares all that on, on the king side. I'm gonna show you this one more time. Maybe it's gonna be better for the memory. So black teases, white teases the black screen to the uh, other side of the board just to get this pawn majority going. And black has a surprise sacrifice, and it's three pawns for the piece. Yeah, Jack Park, I know, I know. It's it's rare, right, to, to do this for a living. So that's why I say I'm very thankful for you guys as well that you guys are also supporting me. You're attending the classes. I, I give you my best. I don't hide any secrets from you. I, I prepare for these lessons like one stream. I prepare for at least 10 hours. And uh, it's you can imagine if I already teach for 40 hours, Two streams a week, I get extra 20 hours of preparation. Yeah, it's a, a lot, a long week, but it's all chess and I like it. I like it a lot. So thank you very much, dear, dear, dear friends. So let's look at one last variation that White could be playing. Um, let me just see which one should I be showing you. And we're going to be looking at the modern variation. It's perhaps most important to show at the end. Uh, it's going to be number eight. As this is highly popular as well. And there's very surprising line. By the way, guys. Uh, I stream on Tuesdays and, uh, and Fridays. Tuesdays and Fridays, I can give you my schedule so far. I'm going to type it in the chat. Um, I think that's how my schedule looks currently. Openings is not my favorite topic to, to, to do streams on. I feel a lot more comfortable with middle games and end games because with openings, yeah, there are many ideas that I can show, but it's just that out of the three topics, my my favorite ones are, are uh, middle game and end game. But okay, openings is part of chess and I like it as well, right? And so let's look at the last variation that white could be playing against the Benoni. It's going to be with, uh, with g6, same structure for black. And this time white prevents this bishop g4 with h3. So that's the most modern variation and that's how players like to be playing nowadays. And here I'm going to show you a surprising idea. Many times in these structures... Um, white just wants to go bishop f4, place the rook on e1, and got e5, and you're dead. Yeah, that's white's plan. 
but there's always this plan for black uh, to be teasing the pawn with like if it's under pressure and trying to bait the knight and the bishop away so that we could eat this knight uh, takes e4 and the main move here is for black b5 so black needs to counterattack immediately while the king is still in the middle and here there are a couple of lines white could play so they play either bishop takes b5 or knight takes b5 and we're going to be looking at both so and everyone who is enjoying the stream i would really appreciate um uh, if you would put a like in this video i can see one person dislikes uh, disliked my stream apologies if you if you did not enjoy something let me know if uh, if i could improve my streams and lessons with uh, changing something in them i would always appreciate the criticism as well as the compliments and uh, the most forcing line that leads to so-called uh, uh, drawish draw draw it's bishop takes b5 and here you will have to memorize things there is no avoidance so the main idea is to sack on e4 and get rook to e8 at some point right um if knight takes of course now with this line we get this queen a5 and uh, that's why the, the point is that we need white's king in the middle so that we would get queen a5 ideas and we will get rook e8 in the other line now white needs to play knight f to d2 then queen takes b5 wins the bishop now i could also give this to you like say what happens if uh, knight c3 a, a, a trick for black that is very simple Thank you, Kala Thapa. Thank you very much. Nice to see you here. I think B5 Maximilian is always an idea in these structures, like almost like Benko style. Yeah, I think so. There are people that dislike the video before I start streaming. Um, I don't know. It's, it, it feels like hate, but they do it for everyone, right? Not for me. Don't know what bad that I do to them, yeah? Yeah, exactly, Alan. You're absolutely right. So here we can just play bishop takes c3 followed by queen b5, right? So that being the trick. Bam, bam. <clears throat> and then white has problems with castling. So knight fd2 is the move. Again, remember how did we get here? Um, we played b5 as long as the king is in the middle. And bishop takes b5. So takes, takes very forcing line. All games pretty much go the same. Knight to d2. Queen takes b5. Wins the piece back. Knight takes d6, we drop a pawn. Looks theoretical, but it's very forcing when you think about it. Queen goes to a6 to attack the knight. Knight dc4 defends the knight. Knight to d7 now. Taking, okay, developing a piece, I guess, and uh, we want to go knight b6. Castles, knight to b6. Pieces get swapped. Takes queen takes very forcing line takes it looks very long but i promise that once you study it there are no alternatives say for both sides and it's like a very long i'm gonna show it to you once um maybe you can find these moves over the board i think they're natural and we have hundreds of games here in the database so black at, at, at last wins that pawn back very long right and uh, okay at some point they reach this sort of equality so we have like and in my database, I, I saw 50 games here, <laughs> which is a lot, right? And we entered this end game, right? So if you really want to play Benoni, you will have to input the work. You can't avoid that, right? Uh, you will have to memorize some of the lines. If you're not intending to learn this, you could view lines like a6, for example, rook e8, more comfortable, right? And b5, what about knight takes b5? Because that's the main move. So we're going to play rook e8 and we're targeting e4. Castles and here we're taking the pawn on e4. Now what if uh, they played knight to c3? So then there is a pin along the e file. So we play knight takes, knight takes and f5. That's again, I'm, I want to emphasize on that king being in the middle, right? That's super important. Yeah, Alan, I agree. It's drawish, but uh, white looks better. I would also be picking white. Maximilian, I'm not the one that picks topics. If it was on me, I, I would not have made any videos on, on perhaps opening because I personally like to be teaching strategy and, and, and a middle game and end game more, right? Or tactics. Um, but um, 
uh, we're getting the topics and we we do the videos because they're also useful i think that there are other coaches who love doing videos on these and they're also very important hello krishna and uh, i don't play benoni right but uh, since i'm a chess coach i know the fundamentals of all openings right because i have students that play benoni benko slav queen's gambit as a coach you have to know everything um just not as deep maybe but yeah uh, a lot in them so white gives up that piece with castles a lot of times and you win the pawn back with knight takes e4 so most of the time okay this is how they they go say rook to e1 a6 kicking the knight out and i think that okay white has the eyes of that pawn we want to pressure that we also have to take care and develop these pieces white has maybe slight space advantage but it's also a burn not only an asset that gives you space i think so for example knight goes back to f6 already d5 is under pressure takes knight takes this is what has been seen in many games knight to c4 remember knight is guarding d6 bishop f4 and now knight d to f6 was rich in many grandmaster games again so these are say benoni style uh, benoni style games um i took care of four main lines i believe um there are a couple of perhaps sidelines that one could study as well benoni is highly dynamical game and if you're looking for a good repertoire to score points and fast time controls against d4 and if you like dynamic play and you can invest time time into uh, into preparation that benoni is a super good opening for you to play but of course if you're playing stronger players avoid it because in tactics they are going to be better and then pick like queen's gambit decline slav something very solid right with sharp openings there is no uh, exception you have to learn the theory so if you like sometimes learning those attacking ideas for black then this is an opening for you if if you don't want to input time and you just want slow advantage right d4 play play the the nimzo right just no need to learn a lot of theory just positional stuff you won't be losing play queen's gambit declined right play the slav then if you're lazy but if you like sharp stuff and if you can't afford learning the theory then only would be an opening for you yeah Alan, i know relusa was also she was doing good uh, good streams on that as well it was i think coaching lessons right as well before i end the stream um does anyone have any kind of chess general re related questions that i could answer you please use uh because i think we're over with the benoni i introduced you to the main ideas and the main variations uh, i cannot prepare you to play benoni in one hour but i can show you what it's like right and what type of positions are you getting into what are the ideas free mind thank you for the suggestion i'm not the one that picks the topics i'm giving the topics chess 24 and uh, they come up with the topics and they give us to to us coaches and we're happy to to do what they think is best for the audience so i think they're really investigating what's best for the audience and what you guys want and maybe there's going to be a video on alahine defense as well um sedan i don't think fisher wrote many books right um i don't think fisher is the only player that writes good books right so there are many good books that are written by by others as well um <clears throat> Alan is asking where and players at the club players will look at your games and prepare with a computer making forcing lines dangerous um not if you're playing sidelines not maybe benoni and stuff like that right i think that most of the people are, are lazy to prepare but unless they know you're playing benoni then of course they're gonna prepare right that's why benoni shouldn't be the only the only thing you play but if you are prepared you don't care if they are prepared yeah as long as you are prepared Omar, I think that if you write suggestions under the videos as a comment, they will take a look at that and write. I, I'm sure that you can suggest the topics for sure. I was talking to Rag more about the modern Benoni today. Uh, I know that there is Snake Benoni where B Black is uh, is playing with the bishop coming to d6 even, right? So they even avoid like these kind of lines, yeah? and then the bishop goes to d6 
And the idea is later to get that bishop over here, right? So I know that this exists, right? Like castles, knight after a, I don't know theory here. But the idea is at some point to get bishop c7, bishop a5. Snake Benoni, I believe, yeah? Hello, Indranil, hello. Kyle is suggesting bishop and knight endgame. I think we covered that, haven't we? I'm not yet sure. Maybe we'll cover that in the future for sure. All right, guys, I really appreciate that so many of you showed up today. Um, I introduced you to what Benoni looks like. I hope that um, those of you who like the positions will investigate it further. I would recommend starting out uh, perhaps book on Benoni. There are many book, good books on Benoni. If you want to learn more about it, you can also work with the opening explorer. And this is an opening that requires preparation. You cannot be doing this without preparation. Not a good opening because it's very sharp and dynamic. Thank you so much for all the likes, for all the comments, all the questions, and I will see you next Tuesday. Uh, my friends, please stay safe. Uh, hope you're going to all stay healthy and continue loving the game. Thank you.